What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week or so. Again, we've missed a week or two just because it's not been all that busy in the scale world. Just the summer always happens, but we're back. We've got a good amount of stories. We're gonna jump into them right now. Last week and weekend was Axial Fest 2019. And during Axial Fest, Axial announced the new release of the 6x6 UMG version. Now, this was kind of sneak peeked at Proline by the Fire. I showed a glimpse of it in one of the vlogs that we did from there, and they fully released it during one of the days at Axial Fest. I actually took the opportunity to steal that vehicle and go take it out on a trail. Now, it is a true 6x6 with a pass through center axle driving the rear axle. The actual chassis has an extension portion on the rear to support that furthest most rear axle. The center axle pass through is actually a function of like a diff cover type insert piece. We we saw something very similar in the AR60s where they offered a pass-through style diff cover to actually achieve the same thing. So this one just uses a simple diff cover for the center axle. However, the rearmost axle is all new. It is a one-piece straight rear axle, but it's a low pinion entrance to get everything spinning in the proper direction. That means that it's got the link mounts up top. Same goes for the shock mount. So it's not just a standard rear axle flipped upside down. So a lot of aftermarket axles may not work right off the bat. So it's gonna take something specific to work for that rear axle. So make sure that you note that in case you're looking to pick one of these things up. The body has a nice rear plastic cage section that goes into it that holds a full size spare. The wheels and tires are the same that we saw on the previous UMG kit version as well. We're gonna see the release of this vehicle in September and the cost looks to be around $450. This is an RTR only and at this point there is no plans from what they've said to release a kit version. But overall driving the rig was pretty fun. The terrain was cool that I got to drive it on. Having six of those wheels and tires made a lot of climbs pretty easy, especially with the wheelbase of that truck. Turning radius is definitely not as good as a standard vehicle, but that's to be expected when you have something like this. The biggest complaint I ever had about the previous UMG was that it was the shortest wheelbase and that was not my favorite. But now, I guess they just gave me everything that I wanted with the longest wheelbase axials ever offered, other than maybe I guess the Yeti XL. So. I guess I'll have to get one. Also during Axial Fest, people who were pre-registered got a sneak peek at a new Axial vehicle. The 6x6 was not the vehicle they were discussing in the sneak peek. The sneak peek is actually an all new vehicle it appears. It's a 1.9 portal axled buggy. Now by buggy, I mean it's got a tube frame style. So it's like a bomber or a wraith, but it looks completely different than either of those. But again, 1.9 and with portal axle. I'm sure there'll be extra information coming out on that in the future at this point it was a pretty limited glimpse that they gave people so we're just going to have to wait but this is definitely something that fits right into the wheelhouse of things that I personally like as well. One of my favorite rigs to drive is a portal axle buggy, very similar to this style. So should be a pretty good fit. Looking forward to seeing all of the design details on this in some sort of upcoming days, weeks, months. We don't know yet, but We'll hold our breath. Last week, Element RC released a rear tube cage for their rig. This basically bolts onto the back half of the existing body and gives you a flatbed cage style design. I actually used a Proline cage that is a similar design. It's supposed to be pretty universal. This one specifically fit for their body, but I'm also thinking probably going to fit a lot of other cab only style bodies as well. So it could be a pretty universal fit. I like the design of this. It's a little bit more utilitarian rather than, you know, adventure rock crawler. So I'm sure it will open up ideas for people and how they want to style it and things like that. Either way, the price is pretty appealing. So probably gonna have to try this out on a future build. Another item from Axial Fest was actually from Proline where they teased kind of a project that they've been working on that they're not sure if they actually want to release. And these are what a lot of people call a twill. And that basically is a tire that has its own support structure inside. And in this case would eliminate the need for a foam. In the full size world, they're usually used to eliminate air pressure, but obviously we have differences in full size versus RC. Anyway, these tires mounted to a regular 1.9 bead lock. So you could obviously put them on the wheel style of your choice. But the honeycomb style support in the center went to a Hyrax tread on the outside, at least in the version that they had there. They actually said that the tread was separate from that honeycomb, so other treads were easily possible. But 
For this one, they just brought it out with that Hyrax tread put on there. I bugged Proline, grabbed them myself, and took them out on a trail. They were definitely a different type of driving experience. They don't have the sidewall fold, but they did have a lot of forward bite still. They also side hilled amazingly, as one would expect with a tire carcass that is fairly rigid like that. As I said, Proline is not sure if they're actually going to release that tire or not. So it's kind of up to feedback from the public whether they're going to move forward with the project or if it'll just become one of those projects that they tried and decided not to move forward with. So if you want that tire, voice your opinions appropriately. You can do it here, you can do it through one of their social media platforms, anywhere you think is appropriate to try and get your opinion to them. It's definitely a tire that I would personally own just for the fun factor. J Concepts was posting a crawler specific tote bag but it's an actual bag that you just stuff your whole crawler into so you can carry it away. And at first I thought it kind of sounded a little gimmicky, but at the same time, my rigs get pretty dirty after handling and sometimes I'm putting them inside of my vehicle even, so I could see where it actually would be appropriate to use it. The retail cost is around 25 bucks, so, you know, if you're bringing four rigs with you, it's gonna be $100 in totes. It might just be one of those things, if I saw it in person at a hobby shop, it would be something that I would consider picking up though. RC Four Wheel Drive has a new version of their Bend Pack Lift. This is a actual functional two post style lift that you can add for your scale garage or wherever you wanna use it. This is basically just a gray version compared to the blue version. Bend Pack recently changed their colors from blue posts to gray posts, I think because RC Four Wheel Drive said that they were actually getting knocked off. So Ben Pack changed their colors and asked RC4 Drive to follow suit. So if you always wanted a gray lift opposed to a blue one, now's your time. Also from RC4 Drive, they released an ARB rooftop tent for your scale rig. So you really wanna go full overlander style, you can pick up a rooftop tent for your rig so you can take scale pictures while you're out on the trail. So if that's your style, what do you know? We got another option. A handful of weeks back, Pitbull announced their Chronic shocks and they recently announced more sizes as well. So now you can pick up shocks from 70 millimeters to 100 millimeters. Price on these, I believe, is $79.99 a pair. These shocks are licensed by BDS and bear their colors and they come with a fancy gold anodized tool. Last week, the VS410 Pros from Vanquish shipped out to customers everywhere. So if you were waiting for them to come in stock before you purchased, now's your time. You can find them at your favorite dealer or through the Vanquish Products website. But that's all the news we had over the last couple of weeks. By all means, I wish that we had enough news to do this every week during the summer as well, but it's kind of turned into one of those every other week situations at this point. But I'll continue to watch, and if there is enough, I will absolutely do the news every week. For this week's question, I wanted to throw one out. After just being at Axial Fest, what is the next big event that you wanna to go to? Even if it's just a large local event or something like that, what's the next one that you would like to get to? Axial Fest was a blast and super happy that I got to go. Just overall, it was a lot of fun. It was a great crowd. I talked to a lot of awesome people and hit some great trails. In our part of the country here, we have the ASD Autism Awareness Crawl coming up in a few weeks near Patterson, California. After that, I'm gonna be up in Oregon for Squirrel Fest, then come back to this area for Crawl for a Cure. And lastly, we've got the RC Four Wheel Drive West Coast Scale Challenge happening at the end of October. So I've got a busy year of events still ahead. Looking forward to all of those events as well. And before we go, I wanted to read the top comment from the last Scale News update, and that's from PF. And it says, my next build is a scale model of Josh, complete with moving arms and exclamation fingers. I just can't decide if I should put 475s or 419s. Definitely my favorite comment from last week and I pinned that one and I'll do that for whatever comment I see this time that grabs me the most as well. But as always guys, thanks for watching the Scale News Update. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.